and we have Debbie Massetti here to tell us a little bit about her club. Okay, thank you, Jody. Um, first of all, um, thank you for um, inviting us to, uh, as a Spotlight Club. We greatly appreciate that. Um, as we all know, our frontline healthcare workers across the United States have been called on to put in extra hours and face enormous tasks during this coronavirus crisis. Our club will be providing a hot lunch, chicken, pasta, and salad to the ER and ICU staff at Bowlingbrook Hospital tomorrow, Thursday, April 9th. At the same time, we will be supporting our local businesses. The lunch will be catered by Shanahan's, a restaurant and bar located in Woodridge. Um, this is just a small gesture in recognizing the hardships our medical staff are facing and the fear that just going to work is bringing them. However, they continue to show up each and every day. And we greatly appreciate that. Um, the other initiative that our club has done is we have supported our local food pantry with a monetary donation. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to Denise Kraft, um, and she will tell us a little bit about a um, pop-up food truck that was held last Friday um, in the village of Woodridge. Denise? Hi everyone, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk about the Woodridge Mobile pop-up that was on Friday. It started at 3 o'clock and went to 4.30. We fed 198 families, and that's just by, we know we fed that much by how many cars came through the lots. I do not specifically know how many in each household that we did feed. Um, the truck came from the Northern Illinois Food Bank, and we had a selection of about 12 items to give the people that were in the line. Um, also, because of the social distancing, the volunteers, where we only had 13 handing out this food on Friday. So um, it was a really good day. Everyone had a fun time. A lot of people were fed. Um, there was one thing we did have to close it down early because like I said, we could only feed um, 200 families and we knew that by how much food was on the Northern Illinois food bank truck. So we had to close down the line and unfortunately we had to turn away about 50 cars, just so you guys know. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Denise. It was a Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Um, then I'd like to turn it over to Mary Honorad. Mary is our club secretary, and she has been kept busy making some face masks. Mary? Hi, Debbie. How are you doing? Uh, can you see me? Yes. Oh, okay, because I can't see me. That's okay. Um, so if I hold this up, can you see the mask? Yeah, we can, okay. we can see it. Okay, so anyway, um, so the first request I got was from Shanahan's, who Rich Moore has been a longtime member and officer in different capacities of our Woodridge um, uh, Rotary. And so he says, you know what, my staff, are handing out takeout foods and doing deliveries and we don't have masks. So I made about eight masks for them. And then a friend of mine who's a nurse practitioner said another friend of hers who works in a nursing home, which I'm not sure where, did not have masks, which sort of concerned me. So I made some from, for them and then I ended up with some friends and I ended up with like 24 masks in four days. So my eyes were bugging out of my head. But um, truly, you know, I've been putting things like um, Oric vacuum bag micro liners in them. But from what I'm hearing, we're like, the, all us sewers are trying to fine tune this. And I guess the attorney general on TV showed how to uh, make a face mask out of a piece of t-shirt. And that seemed to be a good way uh, to do it. Even a bandana would help just to protect you from coughing on someone else. Uh, some people are putting coffee filters inside their face masks. There's a little pocket in here. I have a, uh, 
this is a um, micro type liner out of an auric bag. Um, but you really do have to wash them. Another thing, if, if anyone is going to make them for a facility like a nursing home, don't use elastic because their sewing or their um, washing machines eat up the elastic. So use ties. So my next batch, if I make any, is going to be with uh, tie backs. Um, so it isn't an exact science, but we're trying. And that's about it. All right, thank you, Mary. Um, I noticed Al stopped it. He's joined with us. Um, Al is our um, president elect, and um, he is also the village administrator for the village of Woodridge. Um, you got a little late to the party, so Denise did right. talk a little bit about the pop up truck on Friday, but I just was wondering if you just have a few words that you can share um, with the group um, regarding the Village of Woodridge and some of the initiatives that have been taking place during this coronavirus. Sure, sure. No, thank you. Sorry I'm, uh, I'm late. And Debbie, nice to meet you. And uh, who else is on the line? I think it's oh, Debbie. There's Debbie. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at different pictures. Um, but in any event, Joanne is still, Joanne's still on from Darien? Yep, Joanne is here. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Yeah, so in Woodridge, uh, we most recently had uh, a partnership with the Northern Illinois Food Bank, which Denise spoke about, um, which was uh, just uh, um, a really uh, was successful. And uh, it really, I think, spoke volumes to the need that's out there. Um, I think we were, uh, we were expecting a, certainly a, um, a good demand for it, but maybe uh, I think we probably exceeded our expectations with, uh, with how many came. We had to turn away 50 cars, even though we served 198. So um, I think that was just uh, telling about the times and the times to come of where, where folks sit uh, with respect to their financial situation. Um, you know, we, much like a lot of communities, uh, have been doing what we can in terms of offering some elements of financial relief to our small businesses and uh, residents in terms of um, those who have, you are her in, you know, sort of dire straits financially and that we're pushing off, uh, you know, water shutoffs and fines and fees, uh, postponing uh, applications and license fees and things like that. These are these are certainly not going to help people uh, put food on the table or pay their rent, but it's, uh, it's something. Um, and, you know, we're much like a lot of towns too. We're trying to get as much information as we can out about the programs and services that are out there. Um, and uh, really now it's, it's kind of going into uh, uh, getting to look towards the phase two of, you know, what's the aftermath of this look like um, from a, financial perspective from a, from a service level perspective and what role do we play? And then in particular, um, just from our budget standpoint as well. I mean, municipalities, uh, just like businesses and just like residents who have lost their jobs, they're challenging times ahead with respect to finances. All right, thank you, Al. Mm -hmm. Now on a lighter note, I'd like to turn it over to Mike Adams. Mike Adams is um, the executive director for the Woodridge Park District, and he is also our race director for hopefully our upcoming mini triathlon, um, which is scheduled um, in August. Mike? Great. Debbie, Debbie, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're uh, looking to hopefully host our 21st mini triathlon. It's labeled and recognized in the Chicagoland area as Chicagoland's largest mini triathlon. Uh, it's a unique event uh, that really allows um, first timers that we kind of target to try a triathlon. Uh, so it's a shorter distance. The uh, main race is a 250 yard swim. It's a 10K bike or 6.2 miles and a two mile run. And then we follow that with a kids event uh, for kids ages between seven and 12 years of age uh, where they kind of do half the distance. So they'll do a 100-yard swim, a 5K bike, and a one-mile run. Um, we always hold it on the second Sunday of August. And luckily, we've been having uh, great weather, with the exception of last year, was the first year where we had, uh, had an impact. Um, but it's really a community event. Um, the Woodridge Park District uh, hosts the event at Cypress Cove Family Aquatic Park, which is an award-winning facility. Uh, here in the southwest suburbs. 
Um, and we've been a strong partner with Rotary um, to provide these types of events. Uh, we're lucky enough to net uh, for our charitable purposes on average between twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars each year, and that goes again to fund our charitable causes that uh, we wish to endeavor in each year. Um, it's a community event in that everybody is involved. So whether that's between the park district who hosts the facilities, uh, to the village who provides the access to the roads and the streets and the support through their public works department as well as their police department. Uh, we have three different fire departments that provide uh, EMS services throughout uh, the race activities. Um, and then um, what is uh, really neat is we have totally between 100 and 130 volunteers from the community each year that uh, are critical to actually run the event. Um, we average about 700 uh, participants. And when you combine that with the spectators and our sponsors, and the uh, post-event area with uh, vendors, you know, we're close to 2,000 plus uh, participants on that sp specific day. So again, we're very hopeful that things will come back to some normalcy where we'll be able to host the event uh, this come up, come, coming August. And if there's any other volunteers out there, uh, feel free to go to our uh, race specific website, which is woodridgeminitry.org. Uh, you can either uh, volunteer and register online there, or you can register to be a participant. And we encourage everybody to help out where they can. It's a great event and for a good cause. Thank you, Mike. Okay, um, I think that that's all we have. But in closing, um, I would like to thank the district for introducing us to the technology of Zoom. We have been conducting board meetings as well as our weekly meetings. Um, it's enab enabled us to stay connected and remain focused on our projects and serving our community in this time of need. Um, we also appreciate the Rotary Broadcast Center for the online meetings. I personally have participated in several of them. Uh, so nice to see the faces of Rotary. And uh, last but not least, uh, I'd like to give a special thank you to our district governor, Debbie Ross, for your unparalleled leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. That was, that was really amazing what your club has been doing in spite of the fact that we can't see each other face to face necessarily. Um, you know, hats off to you, great example to our district. Uh, Can I ask a question? question? Oh, yes. Um, the food truck, how did you court, can you explain that a little bit more about how, how did you coordinate that with the Greater Chicago Food Depository? Do you plan to do it again? It seems like food insecurity is a huge issue. Food pantries um, are, are struggling and we're hearing that from all of the clubs throughout the district. Yeah, we kind of heard the same thing, and that was one of the driving forces and why we, uh, our mayor and board wanted to do it, um, which is happening to a lot of the safety nets uh, uh, organizations. What's exacerbating the issue is not necessarily access to the food for these uh, providers, but it's the access to the volunteers. Their, their volunteer infrastructure is basically falling apart. Um, so that's why I think some of them have struggled to, to be able to get out some of their services and food like this. So enter into the mobile food pantry uh, option. And so what they'll do, uh, it's there, it's uh, the Northern Illinois Food Bank, it's their truck, it's their driver, and they usually will furnish one or two uh, volunteers uh, to help facilitate. And really any organization can, can really, you're, you're essentially renting that truck. They'll fill the whole thing with food. It's a very well-balanced um, assortment of food from your proteins to your vegetables to your fruits uh, to your snacks uh, and uh, etc and milk eggs that sort of thing uh, and so for twelve hundred dollars you can have a, a truck brought to wherever you're going to be um, and so it's uh, it's a you know a, a pretty reasonable cost in our minds uh, and it seemed to do a lot of good uh, very quickly uh, the challenge uh, with a little bit the mobile food pantry in these circumstances, what, we've, what we learned quickly is, uh, you know, with the, with the stay at home orders and the social distancing guidelines by the CDC, et cetera, you know, you can't be in large groups. So um, normally an operation like that uh, should have a minimum of 20 volunteers to work really well. It should have 30 volunteers. We went in with 12. And so um, that was a little 
challenging uh, to make sure we had the right setup to have the social distancing and make sure we had all the masks and the gloves, uh, but more importantly, abiding by the rules of, of what uh, is set forth, especially as a local government, if we're gonna be promoting and sponsoring, we need to set the right example. So the volunteer count, it was a heck of a job the volunteers did, um, but it can be a little bit uh, challenging operation in general, but it, overall it went well. Um, it was well received, we had a uh, good demand and people were appreciative of it, it seemed to be. Um, and so uh, hopefully it answers your question a little bit. Yeah, you had, it, there's, it's $1,200 to rent the truck. Right. And that comes, and then it was 120 people that you, or 120 units of service, is that correct or? So, uh, so what the, they'll stack, as I understand it, and I was learning, is they'll kind of provide a truck based on different counts. So, for example, uh, they may, you may kind of discuss with them before the event, well, we think we're going to have 100, right? So they'll stack, they'll, they'll pack a truck for roughly 100 cars or families, if you will. Uh, ours, uh, we figured it was going to be a little on the higher end, given the location, which, by the way, was a partnership with uh, the Woodridge Park District, who's on the line. Um, and uh, the location and the, the increased demand, so we prepared for 200. And so we ended up serving 198 cars, uh, and then, but we had to turn away 50 cars. Wow, that's gotta be a killer. It was, and we, we took a couple criticisms on social media um, from some of those folks who got turned away. You know, I, I understand their frustration and right. it, 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 how it comes off that way, but we, we truly ran out of food. Right. So then that's, that's incredibly reasonable. So you're getting all the food for that 200 potential people for $1,200. Yes. And it's, uh, you get a little bit of everything in terms of your, your box or bag of food. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of everything, protein, vegetables, milk, bread, et cetera, chips, some okay. snacks. And did you do it like a drive through where the kind of the car pulled up and you just put the stuff in the car? Yes. Normally, um, the operation can be done very well by having a combination of just drive ups and walk ups. And that's normally how we've the uh, there's a local group in town uh, called Jano, which is a nonprofit here on Jane's Avenue, uh, who has run a couple of these in the past and they've worked well. Um, but a lot of times you get a really significant amount of walk up traffic, which is great. In this case, we had to really plan and discourage it because we wanted to specifically make it a drive through in light of all these regulations right now and, and the safety issues, right? So mm -hmm. they had to stay in their car and it was a drive up and the volunteers put the, uh, the groceries in their vehicles. Okay. We're hearing that that's the mode of distribution these days, even for food pantries. They're saying, they're just um, kind of marshalling cones and things to create a, a, a hallway or a driveway. A car pulls up, people come out and just put it in their trunks or the back seat. So there's really no interaction. And they can do that very efficiently and safely for, for all concerned. So I was curious, I, if possible, Al, I'll just find you at some point later. I don't wanna keep everybody on the phone, but I, I'd like to learn more because I think there are other clubs that could benefit from this and some right. of our communities definitely need it. And that's such a moderate amount of money for a club to invest to benefit so many families. So we'll it talk see again. Martha has her hand up. Yes, I have a question. Sorry, Debbie. Uh, Elle, what is the name of the company that you, um, that you reach, that you work with? Sure, they're called the Northern Illinois Food Depository or Food Pantry, Northern Illinois Food Depository, I believe. Okay. And they're out of Batavia, Illinois. So Northern uh, Illinois Food Bank. Food Bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, Debbie, this is very useful too. My only yeah, I'm thinking, you know, those the the city communities. And that's not the Chicago Food Depository. It's not. We've mm -hmm. got to separate the two. Right. This is the Northern Illinois Food Bank out of Batavia. Out of Batavia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I just wanted to separate the two. Right, and there may be others who uh, are, you know, have the same missions who will offer this type of service, but this is the one that we are aware of and we could do the most quickly. Excellent. Thank you, Al. Thank you, guys, in Woodridge. Yeah, and Debbie, if I may, just one word of caution for any clubs, too, is just make sure, especially with the increased demand, you really want to make sure you have the right venue to support uh, that vo the volume of cars. I mean, it's, it's, it, it stack up quickly, and we had a lineup of cars, you know, a half hour before the, uh, the event started, so just to be prepared for that. Okay, thank you, Al. Mm -hmm.
Okay. All right. So our next broadcast, we have our um, very own Nikki Scott uh, joining us uh, about um, a Greenwich Time Village tour. So that should be very interesting. And our club spotlight is going to be Naperville downtown. <coughs> and don't Jody, want you to miss. You, wait, oh, yes, Debbie. Before you go on, Nikki is broadcasting live from Great Britain. So this is our first.